When I think about the museum, it's always been a space where you experience a sense of wonder. There are extraordinary collections from all over the world. The other side of my experience was a bittersweet one where I was looking for where are we represented in the museum? Where do I see myself? Where do I see my history, my own culture? Like where is Puerto Rico, where is the Caribbean represented at all? There's very little that's, that's here, most of which has never even been exhibited. I moved to East Harlem about seven years ago, but I've been working with and in El Barrio for over 20 years now. It's a very special community. I'm very proud to live in El Barrio, and it's still one of the most important Puerto Rican communities in the city. I work in a lot of different mediums, in the studio, making sculpture, paintings, all kinds of different work, but I've always also had a practice that involves public art and community engagement. And when this residency started, I was in the middle of a public art project about the activist history of East Harlem called Mapping Resistance, Young Lords in El Barrio. We took 10 really important photographs from collaborating with Hiram Maristani, one of the founding members of the Young Lords chapter in New York, and also their official photographer, and turned them into billboard-sized images all over the neighborhood as a way of reactivating this history. That's always been a priority in the work, is figuring out ways that the work can exist outside of traditional art contexts and in public spaces of community. I was fortunate in that during my residency, I had the opportunity to engage more deeply with some of the work in the collection and get access to the Semi Cojoba stand, which is the most important Taino object in the Mets collection. And that's been a touchstone for many of us from the Caribbean for many years. So then working with the imaging department, we were able to create this 3D scan that allowed me to create a replica object that is as close as you can get to the original for me, it was an opportunity to think about how to not just make a replica, but what do we do with a replica object, right? How can this object live outside of the museum? I mean, one of the frustrations I've always had with the objects at the museum in these vitrines is that they're very static. It's like a mausoleum of objects sometimes. It's a frustrating way to sort of experience these works, especially when they're heritage objects that, you know, belong to a history and heritage that is part of your own history. So for my culminating event of my residency, I wanted to create an exhibition in the storefront gallery called Galeria del Barrio, where the semi could be showcased in the space of my own community so that folks from East Harlem could have direct access to it. The exhibition was called Semi Libre, which was sort of a play on words because semi is also like semi, and semi libre means a free semi, or it also means to be semi-free in the idea of thinking about how to free our experience of how to free the object itself and all of the sort of like colonial baggage that comes with the history of this object being here. So there were two dimensions of this culminating event. There was the Semi Libre as an exhibition and then the block party that was the celebration of the work and also the celebration of the residency. Hey everybody, how you doing? Look at all these beautiful people here. My name is Miguel Luciano. I'm an artist who lives in the neighborhood. I'm also working with the Metropolitan Museum of Art. We're here to present El Semi del Mate. The statue that you see here is a replica of a very important Taino sculpture in the Mets collection. And for me, that was symbolically a way of removing it from the museum and returning it to the people. And this is the very first presentation of this work. Eh, anywhere. So, aquí en el barrio, regresando a la gente, regresando al pueblo, and I'm very, very proud to be sharing this with you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And so, to welcome the ancestors into this space, to welcome El Semi, we invited a very special guest here from the Canais Indigenous Spiritual Circle. It's my honor to present to you El Mexican Miguel Saguey. Kaneya ta kaneya ta aea kaneya kaneba ta kaneba aea kaneba ko wareito wachanuai aea kaneya ko wareito wanahuai aea kaneba kaneya I see Miguel's work as 
he's really a storyteller. He's not just approaching it from a visual lens, he's approaching it from a very holistic lens. He's really rooting it in something that is deeply near to his heart, which is his community. Through SME, people are actually asking a lot of questions, asking Miguel what does it mean and where does SME come from, and I think just sparking curiosity, bringing a sculpture or bringing a photograph to a place where people want to know more about themselves, making this history and this narrative part of a public space. There's nothing more democratic and accessible than that. I love Miguel. I'm super grateful to his art. It always has a lot of social, political commentary. I feel that he honors our ancestors as well as the elders. Like we can just walk around El Barrio and see the young lords being represented. I think that's so beautiful. That's always been really an honor to be here today. We're in that generation that I remember the young lords and a lot of their activist work that they did throughout the city. I remember as a young girl, when they didn't come pick up the garbage and what was done in order to have our communities be seen because we were on scene. And so to have this type of event here is just, it, we come full circle. It puts in the map for the new generation a, a lot of the thoughts of back in the day that are still relevant today. I want to give a couple shout outs real quick. Give some love to the classic writers in the Puerto Rican swing clubs, keeping our traditions alive. I feel very blessed to have these images behind us. Such a powerful image from Iran Maristani. There he goes right there, Iran. Give some love to Iran Maristani. Miguel is very special to me. What I like about him is that he really is about doing the work. He gets up and does the work. He has a similar trait that I had when I was his age. Both he and I, I would say, that we have a love affair with our community. We're happy to be a knocking man. The, the beautiful thing about this day for me was that it was literally a way of taking resources from the institution and putting them back into the community, right? And so it was a day to connect to the exhibition and this work but really just a way to celebrate our neighborhood, our community, in a lot of the ways that we love to celebrate. And so that felt very special. I was really honored that I got to host. And there's a lot of love in the street today, so that's what I'm taking home tonight. But I think the work continues, this continues, this work continues. This was one of the final gestures of the residency was creating the El Met project, the merchandise, and that's a work in progress to see how the museum will commit to expanding the visibility of Latinx artists. With the partnership of the Met Store, we've created a whole line of merchandise. There's t-shirts, there's hats, and tote bags, and coffee mugs that hacked the logo of the Met in Spanish and to say El Met. For me, the whole thing was a provocation. It was a way of sort of promoting this idea that there needs to be more Puerto Rican and Latinx art at the museum. It's also a way of recognizing and commemorating Latinx audiences who come to the Met, right? All the money from these purchases are going to go back into supporting more artwork from our communities being represented here at some point. And in the end, it was really kind of like a model of how to think about leveraging the resources of the institution in support of our community at a really important time. It might be like the most important project that happened during my residency in the sense that it continues on and will continue to seed this fund and hopefully get a ball rolling for something that can really develop as a priority for this institution. So it's just the beginning. Thank you to Miguel Luciano, that's Miguel, and Matt, right there. Enjoy your